Hello. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have come here this evening seeking revelry and entertainment, I must inform you that you have come to the wrong place. But if you come to hear an earth-shaking colloquium presentation, don't be disappointed. We have a lot of material to cover, so let's get started. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me if I'm referring back to my notes several times during this presentation. It's the first time I've done it in English. <laughs> Just wait for it. <laughs> Stuff you should already know. I'm sorry to condescend to reiterate the basics. This is for those of you who fell asleep during your introductory linguistics course. Oh. <laughs> the, <clears throat> yes. the Lardil tribe was found on Mornington Island in Australia. They are known for their sharp wit, dugong husbandry, and unique initiation rituals. When a Lardil man comes of age, they undergo a ceremony where they take the you know what? You know what? How about you look it up on Wikipedia if you have a strong <laughs> Anyway, snipping and slicing is not what makes the ceremony unique. What makes it unique is that during the ceremony, the elders will teach the secret, de the secret demean language to the initiate. And this language is only spoken among initiated Lardil men. The Damian language is phonetically extraordinary, possessing both pulmonic ingressive and velaric egressive sounds. The literature is quite firmly established in the Khoisan Damian branch of the Afro Basque language. Some of my colleagues have heard that I took a year off not long ago and have expressed curiosity as to what I did during that year. As you may have guessed, it was during this time that I made my way to Mornington Island. You see, dissatisfied with my research, I took a year off to conduct some soul searching, to look for a new direction, my true calling. It was this calling that brought me to the island. Dugong wrestling. <laughs> it just so happened, though, that while I was training to join the IDWF, serendipity struck. Any second now, okay. <clears throat> Having endeared myself to the Lardil with my excellent grasp of their language, I became the first outsider to have contact with the Lardial subgroup known as the Trolls. The Lardial word Troll is defined in the literature as obnoxious twerp who won't shut up. <laughs> this subculture is surprisingly underrepresented among the Lardial compared to most societies I've encountered. <laughs> Anthropologists prior to myself had only ever heard rumors of Lardial Trolls. During my brief encounters with this group, I discovered that in their initiations, they do not receive education in Demean, but rather in an entirely new language, the language in question today. In case you missed that, I discovered a new language. <laughs> <laughs> this language does not differ very much from Lardil, but contains some items in this inventory that are worthy of investigation. <laughs> On the morning of July 13th, 2007, 
I awoke half naked in a pile of rubble with a tape recorder in my hand. <laughs> From the tape, I was able to partially reconstruct the events of the night before. <laughs> it seems that I had been conducting an elicitation with a troll while consuming substantial quantities of a beverage he called the Miriamop. If you'll turn your attention to the elicitation, you'll see this language has a fairly standard SOB structure and many grammatical particles. The last sentence here is particularly interesting, demonstrating the incredible variation in morphemic density. Um, note the pop sound, which I interpreted as a discourse final particle. I knew at this point that I needed to investigate the language further. After a warning from my university's ethics board about supposed acts of cruelty toward marine mammals, I was afraid that the unscientific circumstances under which these data were collected might not be well received. In arranging an elicitation with a second speaker, I decided to equip myself with every piece of scientific equipment I had with me just to be safe. This included a spirometer, an interferometer, a sphygmomanometer, a pseudoscope, a seismograph, and a high-speed camera. <laughs> this is the transcription I compiled. Take a look at it for a second. See it yet? <laughs> Long enough. <laughs> Which brings us to the word of the day, photoseismology. <laughs> Thanks to my seismograph and high-speed high speed camera, I was able to record the horrible truth for the world to see. This is taken from the last second of the elicitation session. <laughs> <laughs> the culprit is the voiced velar unreleased plosive. <laughs> I'm sure you're all thinking this sounds eerily familiar. <laughs> Who could forget the famous line scratched in the margin of Edward Sapir's masterwork, Ich bin Heinrich Deutsch? <laughs> A theory later espoused by the venerable phonetician Dr. Jamin Pelkey. <laughs> <laughs> Further research may show that Sapir did, indeed, at last, get something right. <laughs> Conclusions. Ever since Charles Darwin first pr proposed Stammbaum theory in his original German version of The Origin of Species, his theories have continually had an immeasurable impact on linguistics. I propose that my observation of Lardiel Trolls opens the door for evolutionary models to be extended into sociolinguistics, as sociolinguistic factors clearly pay, play a major role in which men survive and reproduce. <laughs> so please, for everyone's sake, don't be a troll. If any of you are in Siberia next November, be sure not to miss my next presentation. <laughs> I fought the schwa and the schwa won. Statistical significance of the loss of egress of vowels and mass asphyxiation among the good. <laughs> 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 <laughs>